Have you ever gotten to the place where you feel like you're at the end of your rope? Yes. <laughs> you, you, you feel frustrated and you, you thought to yourself, how much more can I take? Yes. Uh, have you ever said to yourself at any point in time in your life, I'm just done? You know, it's just the, the things, pressures mounted in your life and situations and circumstances got to the place where you just, you just kind of feel like you feel like throwing your hands up and you just said, something's got to give. Yes. How many of you ever felt like that in the church? Amen. Amen. If you ever felt like that, you're, you're just triply, doubly, quadruply blessed today because that's usually the case for most of us today. We get to that place where we feel like something's got to give. And this morning as I was uh, just going over my notes and thinking about what the Lord has given me for the church today, uh, that was kind of the impression. I changed the title of my message. I had a different title for this message. Same message, but different title. And that's what I minister to you about today. That's what I want to speak to you about today, is the idea that something's got to give. And I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of St. Mark chapter 10. Verses 46 through 52, we're going to read there this morning. And we're going to be reading about blind Bartimaeus. I preached about the blind Bartimaeus more than once. Some of you may have preached or ministered about blind Bartimaeus yourself. And most of you, if not all of you, probably read about blind Bartimaeus. But like I said in the introduction of the service today, we can always find something new. And so today we're going to see something new about blind Bartimaeus. We're going to capture some realities and some, some principles from this context of Scripture today that will be applicable to our situations. God's Word is like that. When we feel like we're at the end of our world and we're stressed out and we're frustrated and we feel like there's... Not much more that we can take. We feel like we've come to the end of the line. We've thrown up our hands and said, something's got to give. We're going to find out through this context that there are principles that are laid out here in his life that can apply to our life today that can help us to get breakthrough. The wonderful thing about the story of Bartimaeus is that Bartimaeus got a tremendous breakthrough with the things that he did to get there. And I want to say this before we read the text today. There are things that you can do as a believer in God. There's things that you can do as a believer in Jesus Christ that can help you get your breakthrough. Amen. If you feel like you're at the end of the line, you're just tying on to the end of your rope, you don't know how much more you can take, this message is predominantly for you today. Because there's some things, there's patterns, there's principles here today that we're going to look at and see that will help you if you will apply them to your life. That will help you get breakthrough. Can someone say amen? Amen. Let's look at the word of God today. We're going to get reading. Um, let me find today. Uh, verse 46. Okay, verse 46 and through 52. St. Mark, chapter 10, verse 46. And the king of Jericho... And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side, begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should, should hold his peace. But he cried out, he yelled even more, the great deal, and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called to the blind man and said to him, Be of good cheer, be of good comfort, rise, get up. He called thee. And he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What is it that you want for me to do for you? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I would receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go your way, your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. And immediately he received his sight and followed him in the way. 
From the 48th verse, I looked at that again, so I'm going to take my text today, the last part of the verse, where it says there that many charged him that he should hold his peace or be quiet. No. But he cried out even more. Amen. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And so that last portion of that 48th verse, where it says that he cried out even more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I want to minister to you with God's help for a few minutes on the idea that something's got to get. Hallelujah. There are some principles and some things I want to show you here that apply to your life right now. Say it right now. Right now. We've been to the end of our road. We feel like there's not much more we can take. We're stressed out all the time. Society says that America is more stressed out now more than ever before. We have more gadgets and things and helps and internet and all kinds of privileges that generations ahead of us never had. We have a microwave, we have instant message, we have drive through hamburger places, we have all these things, conveniences in our lives that the generation prior never had, and yet we are more stressed out, more bogged down, have more panic than ever before, and something's got to give. Wait at me if you hear me today. Come on, give me a wave. Yes, okay. Something's got to give. Something's got to give. We find out in this man's life, we find the blind man sitting by a highway side baby. So not only was he blind, the only way he had any type of sustenance, any type of way to make a living for himself was to beg for it. And the Bible tells us in the context that he was in a good place that day. I just want you to know today that you are in a good place today. Amen. 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 You are in a good place today. He was in a good place today, in that day, because he was in the exact place that Jesus was coming by. Yeah. And the scriptures tells us that Jesus was passing by that way, and he heard this crowd coming by. Now this is at a point in time when Jesus is getting ready to wind up his ministry. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and getting ready to conclude the revelation that God has come down to man. That there is someone that can do the impossible. That when things are, are impossible with others, they are possible with God. Amen. That there's nothing impossible with him. Uh, he, Jesus had said a reputation of who he was. People had heard about him opening the eyes of the blind, healing the sick, raising the dead, causing the lame to walk, causing the leper to be cleansed, speaking words like no other person had ever heard, bringing a revelation to people's lives that brought joy and gladness in their heart. And inevitably, Bartimaeus had heard about him. Because the scripture says that when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he got really excited. The scripture that I read to you says that he was sitting by the highway side begging. But when he heard that Jesus was coming by his way, he started trying to get Jesus' attention. Amen. Oh, Jesus, son of David. He can't see him, but he can hear God. He heard that Jesus was passing by his way. What an opportunity because reputation was following Jesus. That Jesus could do something for him to the point of exactly what he needed. Amen. He knew that Jesus could open his eyes. He knew that Jesus could take away his blindness and cause him to see. And he was in the exact place he needed to be, praise the Lord. He was in a place of desperation. He wanted to see, and he was blind. And the first point I want to bring to you today, when we think about something's got to give, we think about, I want you to think about all of the things that we go through, the dilemmas we face, the, the hardships that we have, and, and the, the different situations that causes us to feel stressed out and, and have panic in our life and, and feel 
on the edge. But we might have somebody here today like that today. I've been there before, and you might be there today. We're just kind of on the edge, and we're at that place. This is point number one. Bartimaeus was desperate. He knew he was blind, but he knew that Jesus could help him to see. And so point number one simply is this. Something's got to give, and something needs to change. There needs to be a sense of need. A sense of desperation in our lives that something's got to change. We've got to get to a place where we understand that in order for change to happen, we need to move into that place to where something's got to get. I've got to tie into this. I've got to understand that I, I, I need to be the place where I'm not going to accept anything less. God, I need help. Something's got to get. I'm desperate. I'm at the end of my rope and something needs to change. What was it that Bartimaeus did? He began to get his focus on Jesus and begin to cry out to God. Yeah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. He started the process of connecting with the Lord. He started the process of getting his vision and direction and focus on nothing else but Jesus. When we get to a desperate place, and we feel like we're stressed out. We don't know where to turn. We've taken all that we can take. We are at the end of our road. I'm here to take today. Get desperate for Jesus. Yeah. Don't look to any other source, but look to Him. He's the answer to our need. He began to cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. In order for something to change, we need to know and have a desperation for change. Amen. For things to change, we need to be desperate for change. Amen. Amen. Yes. Are you here today and feel like something's got to give? Do you feel like something's got to change? Have you got to the place where you know that there's something needs to change? That's the first thing, being desperate for that change. Amen. Something's got to give. You begin to cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And begin to move in the position, in the place of, of, of a, of a uh, decision that I need to get to the place to where Jesus, I get Jesus' attention to help me. He was desperate for that. He called out, he cried out to God, to Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord, something has got to give. We must get to the place of where we're desperate for that change. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something that shifts. A shift is made in our life. Things begin to change when we know that something needs to change. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Things will begin to shift and things will begin to change when we recognize that something needs to change. Amen. You know, they say if you keep doing if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you've always got. Right? <clears throat> Unless you move towards change, yeah. to changing something, it may not change. Some things will stay the same if you resist the change. We get to the place where we know that we're desperate for change, we've got to do something to change. What did, what did uh, Bartimaeus do? He began to cry out to Jesus. He realized he couldn't make the change in himself. And sometimes, sometimes we can't make a change in ourselves. But sometimes we can. Sometimes a change that we need to make in order to get less rest is to start changing some of the things we're doing ourselves. We need to change. Our prayer is usually, the Lord will change them. And the Lord will is not answering your prayers, but the Lord is saying, change you. Amen. Amen. And you find out sometimes when you change, things change. Amen. He was desperate for change. He's crying out to God, Lord, have mercy on me. Son of David, Jesus, have mercy on me. And so we get to that place where we're focused that something's got to give, something's got to change. If I've got a partner with
this or I've got to do something to God that the Lord show me for I'm wrong. Show me what I've done. Lord, show me. Help me to be honest with myself to move into the place of position where you can touch me and create change. Amen. That's what Bartimaeus did. He moved into position to where it was possible for change to be created. He got Jesus' attention by doing everything he could possibly do. And the only thing he could possibly do was cry out to God and get Jesus' attention. Amen. And so he got Jesus' attention. He got focused on the fact that I need a change in my life. So I want to ask you again today to think about what's being preached here. Something's got to give. And let me ask you again to just examine your own life. And look at your own situation and where you're at right now and ask yourself this question. Is there something that needs to change in me? Think about that sincerely. Is there something that needs to change in me? And then be uh, willing enough to let God help you do it. When you begin to become honest with your own self and realize that there's situations that cause stress and cause panic and cause anxiety and cause relationship breakdown and cause hard feelings. Maybe something needs to change about me. I might be the only one today. But I must be desperate and place myself in the position for change to come. You must be desperate for change. Point number two, get focused on change. And realize that you're on, at the end of your rope. You realize that you're at that place where something's got to give. After you get to that place of desperation and not willing to continue on the way things are. Then you need to get to the place where you guard yourself against distractions. Because distractions will try to deviate, try to get you off course. Get focused on change and continue on the path towards change. Notice what it says here uh, in the um, 48th verse. First part of the verse it says that many charged him. Group comes around him and says, hold your peace, be quiet. Don't bother the master, leave him alone. There will always be well-meaning people around you that will give you unqualified advice. It's a pretty good thought right there. I might put that on Facebook after church. <laughs> there will always be well-meaning people around you that will give you unqualified advice. Nobody knows better than you what needs to happen in your life. Nobody knows better than you what you're feeling. We try to empathize. We try to sympathize. We try to get to that place where we join with you in prayer and, and understanding. But nobody knows better than you besides God what you are going through. Now, if I don't get an amen right there, I don't, there's something, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I've got to tell you, nobody knows better than you right. what you are going through besides God. Right. But there will become a lot of well-meaning people around you that will give you unqualified advice. And what you need to know is what God is telling you. Amen. Keep your focus on Him. Right. Realize that He is the source. Bartimaeus realized that Jesus Christ was the source to his breakthrough. I'm here just to declare to you right now, I don't care what it is you feel, what you're going through, what the stress is caused by, what the need is today, I'm here to tell you unequivocally today that Jesus Christ is the answer to you. Whatever you want, whatever you need, wherever you're going, Jesus is the answer to everything. He is the answer. Stay, stay focused on him. Stay focused on him. Say, stay focused. Stay focused on him. Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, stay focused on him. Distractions will always be around us. Amen. Well, many people give you unqualified advice. Well, why don't you try this? Why don't you go there? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you just not, why don't you just give up? Why don't you just quit? Yeah, we all have unqualified advice, but those aren't the answers. When something's got to get. The answer is stay focused on Jesus as the answer to our need. And stay focused to call upon Him. And realize that we can, be, can appreciate opinions. But it's informed opinions that matter. 
Wave at me. Come on, wave at me right now. Amen. I thought this was going to be showered today. You never know what God's going to do. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so, so they came around and tried to get him to be quiet. Hey, Father Vance, why don't you just be quiet? You're bothering people. You're shouting too loud. You're making too much noise. Some people today got a little bit bothered, maybe, because some, some of you people shout today. What's wrong with you people shouting like that in the church? <laughs> Sounds like you're excited for Jesus or something. <laughs> yeah, they're getting all bothered. But just be quiet. He must have been, he must have really been shouting loud. I mean, a whole bunch of people. This, the scripture really gives us an idea that he had a massive amount of people around him. He's going to Jerusalem. I mean, this is like a group of people that are following him into the city. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. I mean, he had a following. He had a, he had, he had a crew. He had a, what, what, what did, what's some other words they used there, kids? He had, he, had a, he, had a, he had a crew. Uh, what else? A gang. A posse. That's the word. He had a posse. I mean, he had, he had, he had things going on. I mean, he was popular. He was, he was the blind man healer. He was, he was the sea walker. He, you know, he was, he was the, 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 the one that could raise him up. I mean, then he had to go on. He was popular to be around. And like, then I'm walking with Jesus. That's right. You know, I'm cool. And, and, and this blind man, this beggar, this guy that, you know, he's a castaway. He's, he's along the side of the road. He's not in the crew. He's not, he's not part of the group. He's not in the posse. He's yelling out to make a lot of noise. Jesus, have mercy on me. And they all want to just come around and keep him quiet. Hey, Bob, hey, he didn't have time for you. No autographs today. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's busy. He's on his way somewhere. He's, he's, he's got something to do. He's too busy. And you get people who will give you advice, well-meaning advice. But it's unqualified advice. It wasn't be any help to Bartimaeus to be quiet. Bartimaeus knew down inside that this was his chance. He had an opportunity to get connected with somebody that could do something to help him. Amen. That's a wonderful thing to know. When you're at that place where you have an opportunity to get connected with somebody that can help you. Hallelujah. That's a good place to say praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking about. Man, I met this guy. He knows this guy. They've got this house. And I've got an inroad here. They, this guy can help me get a job. And they know somebody that knows somebody that works real well in our culture. It's, it's when you know somebody that knows something or knows somebody, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's all that kind of thing that they say. But that barely scratches the surface of what we're talking about today. We're talking about Jesus. Yes. We're talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that there's nothing impossible with Him. Yes. Amen. He cried out to Him, and they come with unwise counsel. And let me just say this, and this is kind of off the beaten path, but so was Bartimaeus. He was off the beaten path. You have to be careful with some of the counsel that you allow yourself to receive. That sounds like a, that seems like that just went over everybody's head. <laughs> Pay attention. Not all counsel is good counsel. Be quiet. Stay quiet. He's busy. He's, he's going somewhere. He's got a posse. He's got a crew. He's got a crowd. He's going someplace. He doesn't have time for you. What a lie of the enemy. Right. Jesus always has time for you. Yeah. Man. He always has time for us. And, then, and so Bartimaeus was smart. Bartimaeus was desperate. Bartimaeus knew that he was in a good place. Because someone was coming by that could do something to help him. And it wasn't just somebody. It was the somebody. It was him. It was the master. It was Jesus. He'd already done it before. If he'd done it before, he could do it again. Do it again.
a bad shape if you walked around Jericho. <laughs> Sometimes God requires a shout to bring the walls down. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Bartimaeus was shouting to Jesus, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. They said, be quiet, but I'd like to this second point. He disregarded the distractions. He didn't listen to the naysayers. He knew inside of him that his help was coming his way. Amen. I've come to tell you today, if you feel like you're in that place where something's got to give, your help is coming yes. your way yes. when you call to Jesus. Yes. And that's the truth. Amen. He, and I like what it says there. It says he did, not only did he not listen to the distractors, he shouted even louder. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Devil, you think you got me on this one? You want me to quiet my shout? Well, look out. Watch me now. Watch me now. Watch me now. <laughs> He said, you think you're going to, uh-huh, you think you're going to shut me up? I'm going to give you twice as much now. Now you just done and did it. You done and did it, devil. You done and did it now. You just watch me now. And it says that it's shouted even the more. I'm not making this up. It's in the Bible. Praise God. We're talking about, we are talking about getting our break and something having to give today. And in that place of despair, when people are trying to tell you, well, you might as well quit. You might as well give up. It looks like it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Those are all tricks of the enemy or wealthy people that are giving unsound advice and don't listen to it. Hold on to your faith and keep pressing through. Amen. Yeah. Amen. As a matter of fact, praise God. You give it twice the effort. That's right. And that's what part of it is he didn't give it twice the effort. He didn't listen to the unqualified advice. He said he shouted even more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Look at the reversal. God is a God of reversal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. God is a God of reversal. <clears throat> you're having that hard time. You're, you feel stressed out. You feel like you're at the end of your rope. You don't know how much more you can take. You are right on the brink of your reversal. Amen. Those same people that told them to be quiet, you might as well stop. Master is busy. It says, as Nick, as, as, as uh, part of this shouting even more, it says that Jesus stood still. Yes. Wow. Jesus stood still. Because of tenacity, because of not giving up. Because of believing that Jesus Christ could supply the need and not listening to unwise counsel, Jesus stood still. And he says, who is it? Go get him and bring him to me. And the same people that just a little while before was tell, trying to tell him, you might as well forget it. The master's too busy. That same crowd is now assigned. I believe Jesus. This, now this is me. This is what I call vague technology. I can't prove it by scripture, but I want to believe it. So I'm just going to say it. You can take it or leave it. It doesn't really matter. I believe those same people that are trying to quiet him down. Jesus made a personal assignment to them to go and tell them to come and get him. In other words, you guys messed up. You're my crew. You know, you're my posse. But you don't represent me right now. You're not representing well. You told them to be quiet, and I'm telling you to go and get him. You told us shut up, I'm telling you to get up. Yeah. 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 Sometimes the enemy will try to tell you to shut up, and God is telling you to get up. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Bring me to the closing point here. We, we, we're to go forward into our destiny. Yeah. God is not telling us to shut up. God, God is not telling us to give up. God is telling us to get up yeah. and go forward. God doesn't want us to give up. God wants us to get up. Say get up. Get up. Not give up. Get up. Get up. Get up. That's a good place to stand and be dismissed, but I'm not done yet. A <laughs> little bit more here to go. God's not telling us to give up. He's telling us to get up. He told him, you go get it. You're my true. You're my posse. 
You're my crowd. You can go all the guys told him to be quiet. Now I'm telling you to go get him. You go get him and tell him the master's calling. You go tell him that Jesus has a good word for him. You go tell him that everything's going to be all right. You go get him and bring him to me. And so it says here, the same guy said, well, it says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and they called him to the blind man. And they said, be a good comfort. Rise. He called thee. The same guy that was saying, be quiet. Don't bother the master. And I was saying, man, we've got good news. <laughs> we really know what we're talking about. Uh, you know, you know what you did? Man, what you did impress Jesus so much that he stopped the party. He stopped the parade. Man, we were having a good time. We were saying, Hosanna, look who we're hanging out with. We're, man, we're rubbing shoulders with him. We're hanging with Jesus. <laughs> but no, you impressed the Lord today. You stopped Jesus in his tracks. And he's asking you to come. He wants to meet you. He wants to meet you. Feel the Holy Spirit on that one. He wants to meet you. And I like what it says. And this brings me to the last point, and that is we are to go forward into our destiny. Look at this. So they said, be of good cheer, rise he called thee. Verse 50 is amazing, really. And it says, he, speaking of Bartimaeus, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Amen. That has a lot of more significance in it than the surface really reads. Because there's a whole change of destiny here. That's, right. That's prophetic. It's, it's, it's well in advance of the miracle. A change of identity takes place at that very moment. When Bartimaeus hears the good news, hey, I've got good news for you. Jesus wants to meet you. It says that as soon as Bartimaeus heard that, he cast away his garment. That garment was a beggar's garment. It had identity to it. It identified Bartimaeus as a blind beggar. And when he heard the good news, that Jesus wants to meet you, he immediately cast off the old identity and started moving into his new identity. He cast away his old spot, his old place, and started moving into the place that God was calling him to, his new place. Amen. To go forward into our destiny and change, we need to let go of what used to be and go forward into what God wants us to be. God is calling us forward. Yes. God is calling us to something better. Yes. God has good news. He said, bring him to me. Very quickly, there's three things that we do in order, amen, to have things change. Number one, we need to decide what we need to change. Yeah. Number two, we let go of our past issues yeah. that are keeping us, are hindering us from change. And number three, we have faith in Jesus to make the change. Yes. I didn't read the last scripture, but I guess for last. Bartimaeus is brought to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus says, what is it that you want that I should do for you? And Bartimaeus, the blind man, says to him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus says to him, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Your faith has made the difference. Yes. Have faith in Jesus Hallelujah. to make a change. Yes. And change will come. Yes. Hold on yes. to your desire for change. And change will happen. Yes. Don't let the load of pressure in life and stress and the things that circumstances that surround us get you down. Realize, amen, that the Lord is not going to give up. And when something's got to give, you know one today yes. that knows how to give it. Yeah. Stand your feet all around the church with me this morning. Thank you.
God, what a great message for us today that brings hope for change. That when something has got to give, Lord, you're the one that can give it. When things, God, that we've tried and stressed out over and wrestled with have not changed, Lord, help us focus on you because you are the creator of change. God, let us take these things that, Lord, have been presented today and embrace them in our heart. Lord, I'm desperate for change. Lord, there's things in my life that need to change. And God, I place my faith in you that they will change. Lord, help me to stay focused on that truth and not be distracted with other alternatives. But Lord God, I'm realizing that my faith and my effort to come to you will bring change. As we, as we prepare to dismiss this service today, I thank you everyone that's here today as a, under the sound of my voice. I'd just like to know today, is there one today that would lift your hands and say, Pastor, I need change in my life. I need something to change. Would you lift your hand and write back down? God bless this hand. Hands up in the back. Hands up over on the side. Yes. God sees these, these hands today. Would you, would you lift your hands up just for a minute? Amen. Father, every hand raised. Every hand raised, God, that is saying, yes, I need this to change my life. As you examine your heart, the Holy Spirit is telling you right now what that change is. Yes. He knows exactly what it is that needs to change. Father, we just attach our faith to the raised hands and say, you'll move in, Lord, in an incredible way. That you'll call them to you as you did with Bartimaeus. You'll call them to you and you'll begin to create change. From the moment his faith and their faith was placed in you, change came. And I believe this for these hands, listen up, that change is coming. Change is coming. Change is coming. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you again for being part of our service. Go with the Lord.